So in this video, we will calculate the de Broglie wavelength. So here you have a 2.5 gram ping pong ball traveling at 35 miles per hour. So that object, which is a macroscopic object, a ping pong ball is something that you know has a weight and stuff, and it's something you can see unlike an electron or unlike even an atom. Um, but it's moving, and it's moving at this speed. Uh, what de Broglie said is that there's actually a wavelength component to something that's moving. It's just that it's so, so small, and it's very hard to detect. Um, so the larger the mass and the faster the speed, um, particularly the larger the mass, the wavelength quality or the wavelength behavior begins to diminish. The smaller the mass, think of an electron or think of a proton, and the faster it goes, the more wavelength properties it has and less particle properties it has. The de Broglie wavelength for anything, anything that moves, will have a wavelength that equals to Planck's constant times the mass times velocity. You may know that mass times velocity also equals to momentum. So the ping pong ball, okay, is 2.5 grams. It's traveling at 35 miles per hour. What is the wavelength of such a motion? We, not, we tend not to think of something as moving as having a wavelength, but it, it does. It's just going to be very, very small. So the first thing we need to do is actually convert the miles per hour to meters per second, sort of our customary uh, units. So 35 miles per hour times, um, I looked this up, uh, but the conversion factor from miles to meters is one mile is uh, 1,609.34 meters. And we want it in meters per second. That's our customary units for velocity. And um, <clears throat> so one hour is about 3,600 seconds. So I'm converting the miles per hour to meters per second. The miles, miles cancel. This, uh, the hours, hours cancel. So 35 times 1,609.34 divided by 3,600 gives us the answer in meters per second. And this ping pong ball is traveling at about 15.65 meters per second. Okay, so that's going to be our velocity v in meters per second. The mass of the ping pong ball is going to be 2.5 grams. And Planck's constant is something that we already know or we can look up. So let's put all of these things together and get our wavelength associated with this traveling ping pong ball. So using the de Broglie equation one more time, it's Planck's constant over momentum mv. Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 uh, it's going to be joules times second, but I'm going to say um, joules times second. I'm going to use the derived um, SI version of joules, and a joule is actually a kilogram meter square per second squared. Okay, so that is what one joule equals times this second. Uh, actually, it's kilograms meter square per second squared. That is what a joule is equal to, so let me box uh, these two. Okay, so a joule is actually equal to a kilogram meter square per second square. Planck's constant is joules times seconds as the customary units, but instead of joules, I'm going to replace it to what it really is in SI base terms. So Planck's constant here is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 kilogram meter squared okay, divided by second squared. Okay, don't forget that second here, this comes from Planck's constant, so I'm going to add another second. The mass of this is 2.5 grams, that's given to us in this problem, the 2.5 gram uh, ping pong ball, so 2.5 grams. And we already calculated the velocity in uh, meters per second, so that's going to be 15.65 meters per second. You see my ping pong ball, ball is in grams. Uh, the units of Planck's constant, this joule times second, the joule has a kilogram. So I'm going to get rid of that kilogram uh, by realizing uh, that 1,000 grams is one kilogram. And so when I do all of this on my calculator, okay, first of all, the units here, uh, this second cancels out with that second. And this second cancels out with the second on the numerator. <clears throat> this gram cancels out with this gram. This kilogram cancels out with this kilogram. 
and one of these meters in the denominator cancels out with one of the meters squared in the numerator, leaving me with meters. 1.69 times 10 to the minus 32 meters. Okay, the answer asks us to solve for it in nanometers. Okay, so it's going to be in nanometers. Okay, one meter is a large length, so that large length means it's going to be 1 times 10 to the 9 nanometers, because one meter is big. And so that big is going to contain a lot of nanometers. Nano means 9. Um, <clears throat> so one meter is 10 to, one meter contains within it 10 times, 10 to the power of 9 nanometers. So the meters, meters cancel. And my final wavelength here is 1.69 times 10 to the minus 23 nanometers. So 10 to the minus 23 nanometers is very, very small. It's imperceptible. It's very, very hard to detect. It's very, very hard to measure. Now, if this was an electron with a very, very small mass moving uh, uh, at the exact same speed, uh, this would be a very, very appreciable number. Uh, that's what de Broglie was talking about when, we're, when he was talking about the de Broglie wavelength.